so uh, thank you for praying for me. I was uh, in the hospital the past two days. Uh, yesterday morning, with a stomach whatever thing, and uh, yesterday morning, Saturday morning, about five o'clock in the morning, I'm like three steps away from the nurse's station, and so there's traffic going back, so it wasn't a sound sleep that night. Uh, but about five o'clock in the morning, I'm laying there, kind of trying to just sleep, and out at the nurse's station, I started hearing somebody singing. This is my story, this is my song. You all know that song. And, and she, then she hummed the rest of it, and I thought, wow, what a way to wake up. And the sun was shining, just started my day off great. So how many here remember Everett Schoberg? One more time, we're gonna sing this song a cappella. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Woo, happy Mother's Day, by the way, to all. You may be seated, oh, you, I was just reading what Sue w lovely <laughs> writing wrote for me. So, so here we go. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. What? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, as a sheriff's deputy, what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother? I'd call for backup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for any of you who aren't sure, what to get. Again, so, Sue wrote this, so <laughs> if it's not funny, uh, it's her. I'm sure what to get your mom for Mother's Day. Replacement silverware is always a good idea. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Anyway, okay. <laughs> I didn't write this. So all kidding aside, we have a few announcements. Union Baptist Church is still in need of helpers for their VBS preschool class the week of June 19th. If you're able to help with this, please contact UBC or see Jessica Foster for more details. If you are planning to send your kids to Christian camp this summer, Linden Bible Church has some scholarships available. There are scholarship request forms on the back table. You may direct any questions to Sean Kuzno. And we want to remind you of the baby bottle campaign to benefit Futures Pregnancy Care. The bottles are out in the foyer. Take home a bottle, fill it with your spare change or bills or even a check. Bring it back here and we will get it to Futures. And the ladies, guess what? This Saturday is a ladies tea from 9 to 11 here at Linden Bible Church. Ladies of all ages, from the youngest to the oldest, are invited to join us. And each family group is asked to bring either something sweet or an egg dish or fruit to share. And there should be a sign up being passed around at the back uh, or at the back table. Yeah, it's on, it's on the back table. Please sign up so we know how many to uh, be prepared for. Uh, the songs this morning um, were not necessarily picked for Mother's Day, but as I was reading the lyrics on the songs, they all can be pertained very much to mothers. Uh, to all of us, but to mothers. So I wrote, I kind of put a lot of the lyrics together and made this little prayer that I thought, at least when I, I am a mother and grandmother, and I love being a mother and grandmother. And I think the, however, the hardest and the most wonderful time of being a mother is when your kids are small. The laundry, the dishes, the, the diapers, the endless, endless everything is endless, it feels like. And um, those were the times, though, that God used in my life to really grow me into helping me understand his love and care for me and how he was in all of that with me. So I hope this is encouraging to the young mothers, to all of us, but to especially, I think, of the young mothers. All of you is more than enough for all of me. I'm so glad you're my friend, Jesus, and you want me to carry everything to you in prayer. I know you hear me from heaven when I cry out to you. Your love satisfies me when I am thirsty and needy. You have also been faithful all of my life. 
You have been so, so good. Your mercy never fails. I love you, Lord, and each breath of mine will sing of your goodness. How glorious the day will be when we all get to heaven and see you. We will rejoice at your sight. We will sing and shout victoriously because of your love, mercy, grace, all of these gifts to us. Hallelujah. Please stand and join us in singing enough. All of you is more than enough for all of me. more 
great worship, you may be seated. Sure, you got this. Yeah, the twins are plugged in, baby's asleep. How hard can this get? We're men. Besides, I bumped into Chuck Norris at a Pizza Hut once. I think his powers rubbed off on me. Get out of here. Go on, enjoy your mommy getaway weekend. Oh, this weekend was a bad idea. You remember what happened last time we watched the kids? I'm not a pinata. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need help. Warning, use of this product may alter your perception of reality. <sighs> All right, everything looks the same. This is a joke. Guys, guys. Guys, it's like the Sahara in this cup. Can somebody hit me with some juice? <laughs> and listen, pulp, no pulp, doesn't make a difference to me. You're the ones dealing with the diaper. Mom goggles. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, sweetie, I need you to sit on your bottom. Listen to daddy. You sit on your bottom, okay? Daddy's gonna come get you. Don't, don't, don't move. Don't, 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 don't dance. Just sit on your bottom. Daddy's gonna come get you. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't you try to stop me. Baby made a poopy, yes you did, bitch. Where are your mom goggles? They wouldn't fit over my hazmat suit. Take this. Oh, oh. You're so cute, bitch. Huh? And then the little boy <laughs> rocked his mommy. Oh, I love you. Forever. I like you too. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Oh, well you take it and you fold it from corner to corner. No, I'm, I'm asking the question, how do moms do all of this? How do they handle it all? Well, maybe they have goggles we don't know about. It's as if God gave moms a special way of looking at things, you know? Okay, who taught you servanthood? Who modeled grace? Who gave you a taste of what God's love could look like? My mom, Mr. T, and my mom. Anyway, I, I just think God gave moms a special way of looking at things. Hey, honey. Hey, how's it going at home? It's all good. Guess you could say I'm starting to catch a glimpse of what your world looks like. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Mama. Hold on, your daughter wants to say something to you. I did mama. She says she misses you. And 
she realizes how important you are in her life. And she doesn't know how you do it. And she knows that she can't make it without you. She said all that, huh? I don't know if she said it. But it's what I wanted to say. And I should have said it a lot sooner. I thank God for you. The twins. Well, um, it, it was nothing. Um, we, we have to go, okay? Um, lo love you, Mommy. Great. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, the deacons are going to issue mom goggles to everybody. Uh, no, just to the guys today. So, um, actually, the, the deacons are going to be put to work because we have a little gift for all of the moms. So, come on up, deacons. You just can't be standing at the doors and then looking handsome and all the rest of that stuff. So, um, this is, again, a day to, to honor moms, and um, <clears throat> one of the good things about that video is I don't have to rely on a lot of jokes, especially uh, Ken Grant's jokes. He was going to let me have some of his jokes, but they were not going to float, <laughs> so especially after that. So, um, guys... Uh, what I'm going to do is ask all of you who are moms to stand up, please, so that you can be seen by these deacons and be given a special gift. Uh, they won't, the gift won't make you sweeter if you watch that video. You are sweet enough, but they are great, all right? And um, <clears throat> I do have a few poems that I want to read to you. Um, but I'll wait until all the excitement of all of the gifts has taken place here. So, um, and uh, it's great to see all of you moms and uh, the beautiful smiles and the look of contentment, which will get bigger and bigger as you uh, use those coupons. So, cool. All right. Um, now, um, since I'm going to, we're going to keep going. How many of you are grandmoms? Stand up, grandmoms. Look at that. Wow, almost as many. Okay, so deacons, get at it. Yep, they get another one. Grandmoms. I think Joel had gotten enough of those uh, cards. If he hasn't, put it on his bill. <laughs> so grandmoms, thank you for loving your children and for loving your grandchildren the way you do. We've got one more opportunity. All right. Uh, Marv, you missed a couple up here. All right. And, and we've got another grandmom over here, too. So we get out of here. All right. Now, are there any great grandmoms? <laughs> All right, yes. All right. Cool. All right. So you get another one. And I know Ed is excited because I got a feeling that he's going to capitalize on all of those coupons. So, great. Now, I don't dare bring up great great grandmoms, but all of you are great. Great? Come on. Come on, guys. Are they great? All right. Okay, good. You've got a chance to redeem yourselves. What's that? 
Somebody said something over there. All right. It wasn't Ken. If it's Ken, it's a joke. Don't just ignore it. <laughs> okay. Well, we do appreciate you, and, and we know it's not just something we want to do once a year. You have to give us that. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, but I, I want you to know I did some uh, a little bit of research trying to find a little bit of um, some serious poems that will express the hearts, our hearts for you. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of lean here. Okay. All right, so I have a few poems I'd like to read, but then for you kids, I know, I, especially our grandkids, are um, into riddles. And so I have a few riddles that maybe you kids can answer, uh, but I'll wait for a moment. I'm gonna read a few poems uh, about mom. And um, I, I think this is really, really special. Um, and while I'm reading these poems, any of you who would like to say something special about your mom, I'm gonna give you an opportunity uh, because Aza and maybe Joe, I don't know if you're gonna be involved, they've got mics and they're gonna bring them to any of you who want to say something. Now it has to be short, all right? But it, uh, you can be thinking about it and if any of these poems really touch your heart, then you're even more primed to share. Um, <clears throat> this, this poem is by a woman by the name of Pat O'Reilly. And she says this, God made a wonderful mother, a mother who never grows old. He made her smile of the sunshine and he molded her heart of pure gold. In her eyes, he placed bright shining stars. In her cheeks, fair roses, you see. God made a wonderful mother, and he gave that dear mother to me. Isn't that good? All right, yeah. <clears throat> this one is uh, by Joanne, Joanna Fuse. How did you find the energy, Mom, to do the, all the things you did? To be teacher, nurse, and counselor to me when I was a kid. How did you do it all, Mom? Be a chauffeur, cook, and friend? Yet, find time to be a playmate. I just can't comprehend. I see now it was love, Mom, that made you come whenever I'd call. Your inexhaustible love, Mom, and I thank you for it all. Cool, All right? You could say amen, yeah, okay. Squeeze, squeeze the mom who's sitting next to you or, or you know, her hand, I mean, so, okay. Um, and this one is by Helen Sterner Rice and it goes this way. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion and of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring, come what, what <clears throat> excuse me, and enduring come what may, for nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaking, and it never fails or falters. <clears throat> one more, and this one is by uh, Janice Cotterell. When God was making mothers, it took him lots of days. He had to give them many gifts that they could use along the way. For the job of being a mother is often a thankless task. They do so much for others, but for themselves, they do not ask. They will often go without so the family could have the best. They are up first in the morning, then last to take a rest. They are often taken for granted, yet they do it all for love. So thank God for a wonderful mother sent down from above. That's a great one, isn't it? 
Yeah. So, are you thankful today? You know, not everyone had the joy of knowing their mother. Not everyone has had the joy of even being blessed the way a mother would want to bless her children. And so, I understand that. We understand it. But, you know, more so, God understands that. And if there are some gaps in your heart, in your life, if there are some voids that need to be filled, God knows all about it. He can fill the void. You can trust him to do that. <clears throat> you know, on, on, as kind of a personal confession, I, um, I didn't come to know Jesus until as I was in my late teens. And I had already given my mother all kinds of trouble. I mean, it was, it was bad. Um, and she was forgiving. Um, there were things I wanted to tell my mother that I never could or never did because uh, she died at age 43. And, um, and I remember the last time I saw her <clears throat> was down at Bradley Airport. I was wheeling her in a wheelchair. She was moving to Florida to uh, spend her last days with uh, my grandmother. And um, I had things in my heart I wanted to tell her. As I remember pushing the wheelchair uh, to the gate and, and feeling the bumps on, the, on the, you know, the, uh, the floor and thinking, I've got to say something, I've got to say something. And then I thought, well, I'll just put it in writing. And I was a lot better at that then. I, and I did some of the things she did get, but one of the letters that had a lot I wanted to say never got to her uh, before she died. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, and that is a regret because I, there are things in my heart that I would love to tell her face to face. Uh, things that I didn't become more appreciative of until I became a parent and a husband and you know, all that goes with um, growing in the Lord Jesus Christ and learning how to appreciate and love on other people. And, um, and you know, there are messages in your heart that you need to tell your mom if you've never done so. And if you have a mom that is alive today, of course. Um, but you know, I know that um, I will get to see my mom because she came to know Jesus. And um, I didn't know that for sure until the woman who led her to Jesus got in touch with us and said she found uh, the note in her journal years ago of having led her to the Lord. And, and of course, I do remember those days as a child uh, being dragged to church, <laughs> dragged. And that was true. Uh, it was part of what I was having to deal with myself too. But, so we have blessings. We have blessings in our midst. And so while you're still thinking about what you wanna share about your mom, if you want to do something, I have a few riddles for you, you kids. So if you know the answer, put up your hand. You big kids can do the same, all right? The first is, all right, why is a computer so smart? Come on, and this is an easy one. It listens to the motherboard. <laughs> Ken, remember that one. Okay, what did the mother rope say to her child? Don't be naughty. What did the digital clock say to his mother or its mother? Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> Why did the cookie cry? Because his mother was a wafer so long. Okay. Why did the baby strawberry cry? Because his mom was in a jam. Oh, I know. Uh, okay. <laughs> What did the mother broom say to the baby broom? Time to go to sleep. <laughs> I thought mine were bad. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm okay. Okay, now this is a good one. Why is Mother's Day before Father's Day? Now, this is a hard one to believe, but it's a good one. Why is it? Oh, 
because mothers are worth more than fathers. Well, you know, it kind of goes along with this because the answer is so the kids can spend all their Christmas money on mom. <laughs> now, I don't know how many of you kids have Christmas money left, but save some for Father's Day. All right. What kind of candy? This is the last one. What kind of candy do moms love for... Yeah, what kind of candy do moms love for Mother's Day? Her, she kisses. Remember that one? How's it going? Okay, good. All right. Um, do any of you want to share something? It can be, you know, kind of a humorous or it could be a very serious thing that you would like to say about your own mom. Come on, some of you have some wonderful things to share. Who's got their hand? Oh, Ken, go ahead. So uh, I was my mother's favorite child. I think it, uh, uh, so maybe not, but she, she at least made you feel like you were, no matter whether it was Mike or Larry or Pam. She just felt, you, you felt that caring individually, even though we were kids as a group, sometimes not lovable. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, um, yes. <laughs> Um, I just want to say, well, I have two thankfuls to give. So my first thankful is thank you to God for blessing me with this woman as my mother. <laughs> Sorry. And my second thank you is to my mom for all the sacrifices you have made so I could have everything I've wanted and needed. appreciated and loved. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, I guess what I will do now is offer the young people, the children, an opportunity. You can go to Children's Church, right? Good to see you, Posey. Welcome home. Do you have an Italian accent now? <laughs> C, C, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, as it is obvious to you, Joel is not here today. Um, uh, I talked to them last evening when I learned that uh, I'm going to be doing the message today or whatever you're gonna get. <laughs> and, um, uh, he's been sick, and so, um, so be praying for him. Uh, it's he's had a rough uh, few months of of having congestion and, and sickness and so on, and it just is lingering. So uh, we need him. <laughs> I need him. <laughs> well, we we do. We we miss him his uh, ministry to us and as a pastor. In fact, yesterday as we were hiking, um, <clears throat> uh, we went hiking for Mother's Day celebration. So, and I remember and, and uh, watched uh, our three youngest grandchildren running up the hills, up, up the mountain, you know, and thinking, oh, I can't put one foot in front of the other. <laughs> but, um, and so uh, <clears throat> when, um, I was thinking yesterday, I was thinking, well, I wonder what message Joel's going to give tomorrow for Mother's Day. And thinking, oh, well, it'll always be good. It's good. He, I love hearing him preach. And so uh, you may get it next week. Who knows? Uh, or you'll have to wait a year. We don't know. So that's between him and the Lord, actually, right? So, but the Lord obviously didn't want him to preach today. And... Um, and so we, we do need to keep him in prayer, and, and, uh, and we do. We thank God for him. And Well, <clears throat> I wrote down a few things last night, and I might read a couple of them to you, but um, as I was praying, Lord, you know, I don't want to stand up here and tell jokes 
or anything like that, really. And even though Ken has some good ones, I didn't want him to. Um, but um, some thoughts came to mind, and they were along the line of gifts. Um, and, and um, you know, of course, I was thinking about the gift of moms, because, you know, moms are a gift. We're the recipients, right? Moms truly are a gift, as the poems have, have uh, demonstrated, as even the riddles have demonstrated, and so on. And the, obviously, the video that we got to see uh, made a huge point on that. Um, <clears throat> motherhood is truly a gift. Uh, as we considered in these poems and sayings, uh, each of us are the recipients of this gift. Whether you are a biological or an adoptive mom or a spiritual mom. See, all you women have the power and the privilege of being a mom of one kind, one sort or another. Um, <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and spiritual moms especially are appreciated through their role modeling, their discipling, their mentoring. Uh, they're caring for others with that special grace and touch unique to godly women. You are a gift from God and truly deserve honor, praise, and our thanks, our sincere, our heartfelt thanks. It is a pleasure to be in fellowship with you. Uh, the, the beauty of Linden Bible Church is fellowship, is our desire to, you know, to worship God together, to encourage one another by bringing one another into the presence of God, the spontaneity of prayer, uh, the spontaneity of offering praise and thanksgiving and, and uh, words of appreciation for one another. That is so powerful uh, and, and it is part of who we are. Uh, and so <clears throat> you deserve honor, praise and thanks. Gifts often become more meaningful when we experience them through contrasts. Offer a few of them. For example, a child receives the gift of a mother's comfort as a result of a fearful or painful event. You know, who do they call for when they stumble or fall or somebody hits them or whatever, you know, playing? You know, it's mommy. Now, once in a while you hear daddy, uh, but I mostly hear mommy. Uh, how about the pleasure of rest becomes sweeter after a difficult day of physical or emotional stress? As a contrast, isn't it, right? <clears throat> Unconditional love has more meaning when we face rejection, hurt, words, or, uh, or hatefulness. Forgiveness is more meaningful when we have been a victim ourselves. Success is much sweeter after periods of failure. See the contrast? Uh, we appreciate success so much more when we have come out of a whole series of failures, right? Uh, yeah, God allows these contrasts, seeming contradictions into our lives because he is a loving God. And I wanna explain some of why I'm saying that um, as we go through uh, this next, uh, these next few minutes. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure we'll all, we all may agree that there is one gift greater than we can begin to imagine. A gift when received that will turn our lives around from condemnation and death to life, hope and freedom. I'm referring to the gift of a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and a personal relationship with him through his word. It's not just a haphazard relationship with God. His word enhances. It brings out that personal relationship. That's why we crave to be in God's word. That's why we worship at, at Linden Bible Church, right? We, the, the word of God is inseparable from our growth, from our fellowship, from our worship. And I hope you get that message 
Um, when, we, when we make a point, we really purposefully um, include uh, what God's word is saying. And that's what I'm trying to do here this morning too. Um, <clears throat> so the power of this relationship often shows up in unexpected ways that seem contradictory. And I've been giving a few examples uh, to our knowledge of God. Uh, I call these contradictions contrasts or ways to view the unseen character of God. If you want to see more about who God is in our world, in our lives, in the circumstances of our life, um, we, we really need to look at contrasts, things that seem to be contradictory. God is sovereign. He has his thumbprint on everything. He does not allow things into our lives um, <clears throat> unless it's going to ultimately bring good to us and glory to his name. Now, I don't know how that all works because I still have questions about some of the all things. Probably you do too. But God is perfect. He is sovereign and he brings things into our lives that he knows we need. But he uses those things to display his unseen character in more physical and more prominent ways. Um, in John chapter 4, verse 24, God, it says, God is his spirit, and the people who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. You know, we don't see God. No one sees our spirit, but they see the, the effect of it, right? The impact of Christ in you, the hope of glory, the relationship with him. And so, we, as we worship God, as we pursue him, we cannot avoid uh, encountering the truth. And that's where God's word comes into play. We need the truth. We need to be honest and truthful before him, even about our struggles, our problems, you know, the things we resent, <laughs> the things that we, we don't want to let go of, you know, that we kind of hold on to. Uh, to, to stay mad or whatever it is. Um, he wants us to be truthful to him, and he provides a way. So if we stop and consider the contrasts in our lives in the same way that we value or view in the value of, of a loving and godly mother, we just might begin seeing God as he intends I'll offer a few examples of contrast to consider. You might note parallels in your own personal experiences. Consider them as a gift, a way to view the unseen and sovereign God we worship. All right. I've got one page here, so we're going to get done early, I think. So I, you know, this morning I was thinking of this and I thought, well, I'll just entitle this Knowing God Through Contrasts. So that's the title. If it fits all the way through, fine. If it doesn't, forgive. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I actually started lists. If you know me, you know I, I do lists. Um, and I try not to do lists when I'm complaining, though. Right? That's something the Lord ha is trying to heal me from. So I do lists of praise, of thanksgiving, of, of how I view God, of how he blesses me, how you bless me. Um, I have all kinds of lists, and just look at my computer. Uh, you know, it, I, I've got all kinds of files that way. Well, I started a list of contrasts, of contradictions, things that seem to to go the wrong way, you know, things we would avoid, pretty much, but that God uses to show how wonderful he is, how, how loving and caring he is. So bear with me as I, I tell you about some of these contrasts. I might elaborate on a few, and then um, I'll bring it to a close. So, and there's no order of priority. They're just, it's just a list, okay? So... Um, and I do have a lot of scripture references, but I won't, you know, uh, have us read them all. You may want to jot a few down. 
Uh, there are a few I am going to read, and in fact, the first one is one I would like to have us read. At least it'll go up on the screen. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses excuse me, uh, 7 through 18. It's a little bit longer passage, but um, it's really re rewarding. And, and I want you to think about this. There is a contrast. There is what seems to be a contradiction that is uh, presented in this passage. So, verse 7, but we have this treasure in jars of clay. Treasure now is referring to the presence, the, in, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, um, because we have a relationship with Jesus. We have his life in us, right? So we have this treasure in jars of clay, our physical bodies, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Verse 8, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. <laughs> Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Hear that? Read that? We do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. And the Greek word for renewed is made something out of nothing. He doesn't use the old stuff that you brought into today. He starts fresh and gives you something brand new. Only God's miracle, only God's provision. You know, can you imagine, you know, his infinite knowledge and power that he takes your life, your inner person, your inner, your inner spirit, and he gives you something brand new. Wow. I mean, that'd take your breath away, right? I gotta take a drink. <laughs> well, anyway, for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. <laughs> so, what does he do? He afflicts, he allows affliction into our life so that he can renew us with something we never, ever had the opportunity to experience before. Cool, huh? Come on, it's, that's great. <laughs> okay, good. It, it's Ed's birthday today, so uh, you can see he's starting to get loosened up. <laughs> All right, another contrast. I'm just going to tell you the scripture. We don't have to read it. God is all-knowing. But you know what? He's willing to forget. Now, not forget because he has a memory problem. He's willing to set aside because he can remember everything, right? He's infinite. But he's willing not to hold our sins against us, all because of the blood of Jesus. Great? All right, and um, a, a good passage to focus on is Isaiah 43, verses 24 and 25. He is all-powerful. And this, this amazes me. As the all-powerful God, he will not make us bow before him. If you want the context to that truth, read Isaiah 40. 
He is all powerful. He won't make us bow before him. Now, Philippians 2 tells us that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But you know what? That's not because God is forcing the issue. All he has to do is show up. And we are just overwhelmed by the truth, by his presence, by his glory. We'll have no choice but to bow, the believer and the unbeliever. It will be involuntary because of what they experience of the presence of God. Not because he's telling them you have to bow. See, God honors our will. That's why it's so hurtful when people choose to reject Jesus. He's allowing a person to choose eternal separation out of their own pride and arrogance and rejection of what Jesus has done for us. That's sobering. But it's God. He's not going to force you. He's not going to force anyone. He's the awesome king. And of course, as Matthew 20, verse 28 tells us, he's also the humble servant. Contrast. King, <laughs> who doesn't need to serve. Servant, because he wants to serve. Cool. Another one. He is beautiful. I think that's one of the things I'm looking forward to when I see Jesus in heaven. A beauty I could never, ever, ever imagine on this planet. A beauty that will keep me from looking away. I mean, how many billions of years are we going to just stand there gazing, <laughs> looking at Jesus? We're going to see him face to face. Isn't that, that's wonderful, isn't it? But he's beautiful. But you know what? On the cross, he was unrecognizable. For us. He did it for us. Uh, Isaiah 52, verse 14, and Isaiah 53, verse 2, are, will give you some insight into that. God is a consuming fire, but he brings life out of ashes. Beauty for ashes, right? Deuteronomy 4, 24, and Isaiah 61, 3. Here he is, the created, uh, he, I, I'm sorry, the creator. He created the heavens and earth. As John 13 tells us, he washed the earth off his disciples' feet. What a contrast, huh? He has no needs. You know, he doesn't need us to gather together and worship him. He doesn't. He is completely content as God. But you know what? He delights in our worship. That's one way we put a smile on his face when we willingly come before him and we worship. A God who has no needs welcomes us into his presence to worship him. What a privilege, right? Come on, you can say amen to that. You know, I don't like talking to myself, all right? And sometimes I feel like, well, yeah, I know you're all sitting there with us, gaze of, you know, I can't believe what I'm hearing, right? <laughs> well, all right, I, I've got a few more. <clears throat> um, He's invisible. So how do we get to see God? If he's invisible, okay, we're talking contrast. How do we get to see God? Well, yes, all right, and, and I didn't think of that one, but <laughs> we get to see him by faith, right? And really, that's the most reliable way to see God is by faith. We get to see him by faith as we look, at, look for him in others, sure. As we look for him through his word, as we, as we seek to, to look for him in the midst of the contradictions and conflicts of our lives, right? 
Sure. Okay. Um, that, that would be a, a good verse for that would be Hebrews 11:27. Um, he invites and yet he hides. I'm not going to go there. Um, <clears throat> he is the king of glory, but he embraces our shame. Whoa. Uh, Luke 19:38 is a, is a good scripture for that in Hebrews 12 2 uh, you know uh, but the, for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising its shame for us for us he is omnipresent which means he's everywhere <laughs> this, this this kind of blows your mind doesn't it for believers, this brings it right to home because if he's omnipresent, he calls your body and mine as a believer his temple, his dwelling place. Now, figure that one out, right? That's why when we look at one another and as we minister to one another, as we fellowship with one another, the greatest compliment we could offer one another is, I see Jesus in you, right? Cool. All right. Uh, he's the purest of the pure. Oh, wait a minute. The omnipresent and calling it our, our uh, that other one is 1 Corinthians 6. Okay, he's the purest of the pure. And yet he touched lepers. He touched the unclean to bring healing and wholeness into their lives. You know, can you, can you relate to some of these con contrasts? Have you ever felt unclean? Have you ever felt untouchable? Have you ever felt unlovable? Have you ever felt unacceptable? <laughs> Go to Jesus. He's used to cleaning up the unclean. If he can do it to a leper, he can do it to you and to me, right? Sure, sure. Okay. These two verses I want up there. Colossians 1.27. He reveals, <clears throat> and the contrast to that is he conceals. This is one of my favorite verses. <laughs> Colossians 1.27 says, To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What, in essence, that verse is saying to us, because there's a whole context that we'd have to take and, and consider. Basically, there was a mystery hidden throughout all the ages. The Old Testament brings that out, that there's something good. In Hebrew, it says there was something better coming, right? A mystery was being kept by God that was fulfilled in Jesus. And the moment you receive Jesus into your life, the mystery is completed because Christ, who was promised before time, becomes your personal savior. He, he enters into you and something that you could never do apart from him. You know, all the good deeds, all the works of, you know, good intentions we wanted to do before we got saved, no matter how good they looked, they were still inadequate. They didn't float. Christ now provides a way for you and I to glorify God. <laughs> To glorify him. What does it mean to glorify God? To bring attention to his character. That's what glorify God means. You and I in Christ can now point out to the world what the character of Jesus Christ is. Cool, right? I mean, unbelievable that God would use a human vessel to point out his divine character. But it's the privilege you and I have, right? Come on, right? <laughs> Colossians 1, 27. Memorize that verse. Ponder it. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you the meaning of what it means, what it is 
to bring out the character of Christ <laughs> to glorify him. Wonderful. All right. Uh, the other verse was uh, Hebrews 11, 6. Um, where is that? Oh, yeah. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. All right. <clears throat> he is rich, <laughs> yet he became poor, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. He is total righteousness in contrast to his total righteousness. What do we learn about him? He died the sinner's death. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. I'll read that. <clears throat> All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses or their sins against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal to us. We implore you, or we urge you, we beg you, <laughs> on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin for who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Can you imagine that contrast? Jesus knew that in order to make me righteous, he had to become the sacrifice to pay for my unrighteousness. And to suffer all of it for me, for you. He was sinless, yet Matthew eleven nineteen 19 tells us he was the friend of sinners. He is sovereign creator, the sovereign creator. And what does he allow happen? What is, he, what is the contrast? He allows himself to be nailed to a tree that he created. He walked in the Garden of Eden joyfully. He sweat drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26. A verse that I've often wondered about and wrestled with the Lord over is Job chapter 5, verse 18. If you put that one up there. <clears throat> and it says very explicitly, for he wounds, but he binds up. He shatters, but his hands heal. Have you ever felt wounded? Have you ever felt unappreciated? Have you ever felt that the stuff coming into your life is undeserved? Have you ever felt that God was mad at you in some way? That he's allowed something into your life that you, you know, that you would have, you'd avoid like anything else, like, you know, like the plague? And then have you ever asked God, why me, God? Why did you let this stupid thing happen to me? Why would you let me go through this rejection, this hurt, this pain that's so foolish? Why, God? God wounds. He is behind these wounds. He doesn't make sin, and he doesn't cause sin to have its effect. But he allows your life to be wounded by it so that he can bring healing into your life. And because he heals you, you become an instrument of his to bring healing to others. Right? We can empathize. We can cry. We can rejoice, we can hug, we can, you know, we can experience the things that are desperately needed that we felt deprived of because we felt wounded. And we've asked and cried out to God, why did you let this happen? We all can think of things like that, right? Sure. But God, Job knew God in this way. 
Job was able to say, God, I'm trusting you. Yes, you wounded me. But you also bind my wounds. And there's no better way of getting healed than by the hand of God. The last one. Because I'm almost out of time. Imagine that. I didn't know if I'd go so long. You probably didn't know that either. <laughs> well, I can. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to pull this one on Fred DeMazzo one of these days. When somebody calls for Fred, I'm going to say, it's him. You come up here, and he might give us a real, real short sermon. <laughs> a very short sermon. Right from your seat. <laughs> oh, Okay. God is unapproachable. That's why the blood of Christ is so important, right? That's why we need to be cleansed by the flow of the blood of Jesus constantly in our lives. But he invites us to draw in here. Here he is, unapproachable. But then he says, come near to me. And when you come near to God, you're bringing everything with you, right? Do you have a lot of baggage? Well, I might say, who doesn't have a lot of baggage, right? And I'm not going to embarrass anybody. But you know before the Lord that there is some baggage in your life that you need to unload. And his invitation is, though I'm unapproachable, God is saying, draw near to me because I've provided a way. It's the blood of Jesus. Right? Wow. You know, I am speechless over this. And I'm managing to say something, but I'm speechless. I just can't get it through my head. The infinite, all-powerful, perfect God wants me to have a personal encounter and relationship with him. And you know what? I'm that close to seeing him face to face. Like some of you have already experienced, right? The brevity of our lives. One moment, one breath, the next breath we're with him. And he wants that, he wants us with him. <laughs> He's the most excited person in the universe over you and me, you know that? Because he loves you. And he showed us that love through Jesus. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. You can't get close to God without getting clean. So don't be embarrassed about the, the baggage you've got with you. Take it to him so that he can cleanse you of it. Right? It's always available. Do it. Stop using excuses. It's just pride, right? And make your hearts pure, you double-minded. You know, double-minded is totally unreliable. Right? You can't serve God and mammon at the same time. You can't serve yourself and serve God at the same time. You know, you can't live a hypocritical life. Either you're on to Jesus or you're not. You can't be Mr. or Miss Good person in front of all your peers and never bring up Jesus. If you have a witness, it needs to come out. You can't hold grudges. You can't hold back from giving of yourself. What would our church family look like if everybody here present manifested the gift that God has given to you and, and begged, I've got something I want to do for Jesus. Would you let me? <laughs> would you provide an opportunity? What would it be like? I mean, we have needs right now that I know of in our church family 
is because some of you aren't doing anything. Uh, and, you know, please, if you, if, if you think I'm being critical, uh, take that to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right? But, you know, I'm trying to be gentle and, but truthful. We all have something to offer. What do you have? Right? Closing. We need to be appreciating these contrasts and as, we, as a way to look at the privileges we have of knowing Christ. That's all. It's enough. Do you have a saving knowledge of Jesus? Have you been jumping through hoops and just saying the right things and thinking that your performance uh, is okay, but you can hold on to that bitterness or you can, you know, be resentful and, and protect yourself, keep that hedge around yourself because God isn't going to protect you. Have you been living a life that way? That's phony. You need Jesus. Have you received Jesus? Your life should show it. How is he going to show it? What contrast in your life is, going to, is God going to use to bring you out there? It's exciting. And I'm going to be watching and anticipating what God is going to do next. He's going to keep us on our toes. So let's pray together, and we're going to close with a few songs. <clears throat> um, and uh, for the first time, I think I finished all my notes. <laughs> So and maybe I'll come up with a few more as I think about this, but <laughs> let's pray. Lord Jesus, we're serious about you. We've come here to worship, to fellowship, and Lord, you've blessed us by giving us the opportunity to honor moms and these precious women in our lives. You've brought lots of wonderful reminders to us of, of our own experiences, and and you've allowed us to, to kind of wrestle with some of those contrasts in our own lives. Contrasts that you've allowed us to experience because you want to reveal yourself, the invisible God, to us by faith. So thank you. Lord, would you, would you bring this reality of Christ in you, as the word says, the hope of glory to each one of us. And Lord, we want to leave here today changed. We want to be able to say we have encountered the living God and we're never going to be the same again. So please do that in our lives. Lord, bring great conviction to those here in our church family who are still holding on to bitterness, resentment, trying to protect themselves, living in pride, lacking humility. These things that, that we want everybody else to not to see. But Lord, we all have that baggage that we want to deal with, that we choose to deal with before you today. So thank you for allowing us this privilege of being in your presence in this way. So. We're going to walk out of here cleansed and whole and rejoicing because we are members of your family. We know the living God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah is right. Come on there, Marvin. Where's the hallelujah? hallelujah? Okay, good, good. We're going to sing a couple closing songs. And um, you got to put some energy into it, all right? So um, you've been sitting... Oh, the second one, okay. So just believe, Christy. So stand and sing with us. First song is Hail King of Heaven. And then we're going to go into um, Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus. Okay? <laughs> in
into these dry and thirsty souls. Place for your glory to dwell. 
have a great